the National Selection Panel have named the following 12-man squad for the third and final Commonwealth Bank day-night test against South Africa starting on Thursday. Uh, the squad is Steve Smith, David Warner, Jackson Bird, Peter Hanscom, Josh Hazelwood, Usman Kawaja, Nick Maddinson, Nathan Lyon, Matt Renshaw, Chad Sayers, Mitchell Stark and Matthew Wade. Now before um, I take questions, and happy to do so, uh, I'd just like to make a, a couple of comments if I may. Um, obviously the past few days have been very challenging and important for cricket in this country uh, since the surprise resignation of, of Rod Marsh. Uh, this panel, with the support of our administrators, decided to revamp our team, taking into account form, ability and or potential to perform at test level. Uh, we see this as a very exciting uh, challenge for everybody concerned. Uh, I'm not for one minute going to suggest an immediate turnaround. Uh, patience will be required, but we are obviously hopeful that these players can gel together and ultimately stop the downward losing momentum we are currently experiencing. Wasn't long ago, as we all know, uh, we were number one in the world. We'll continue to ask all of our players to leave no stone unturned in their quest to improve, including those that have been left out just recently. It's no secret that our test team has not functioned or performed to the level we expect. We accept that a lot of the criticism that has come our way has been warranted. However, I ask that everybody take a deep breath and give this new team a bit of space. We need every, everyone to get behind these blokes to encourage and help them in what is going to be a, a very testing time for them. Uh, the captain has been thor thoroughly canvassed and informed of our intentions through the selection of this team. His opinion is always asked for and of course regarded very highly in our discussions. Players that have been ruled out and therefore not considered because of injury for this test match were Adam Voges. Of course, as we know, Adam suffered a bad concussion uh, during the current Sheffield Shield game. Uh, Mitchell Marsh has an injury, has a shoulder injury, was not considered. And Stephen, Ke Stephen O'Keefe, who a lot of people touted as, as in contention for this test match, uh, has a calf strain and medical opinion is he would not be 100% fit for the test. Uh, we don't intend taking players that are not 100% fit into a test match. That's uh, all I have for you there. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, Trevor, a, a week ago in Hobart, you, you picked Callum Ferguson, indicating he's one of the top seven or eight batsmen in the country. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been in the test team. How do you justify leaving him out after one game? Yeah, as I suggested, uh, we were given the charter to revamp the test match side. Um, sure, it may sound harsh, but Callum, like all of our other players, except for our bowlers that went back to, to Sheffield Shield cricket, had the opportunity to, to press their claims for, for inclusion in this side. Um, some have, some haven't, and I would suggest that, that Callum is not discarded by any means. Uh, it doesn't mean the end of the road. and we would love Callum to continue to score a lot of runs and belt the door down and demand selection again. So that was on the back of what happened in Queensland, the one game? Not so much one game, it was more a, about a revamp of this whole setup. And what we're trying to do is get together a, a unit of players that can take us forward for the future for some time. Would Stephen O'Keefe have played? Is, is Nathan Lyon perhaps a little lucky with this calf injury? Hypothetical question. Of course, uh, Stephen uh, was in serious contention, there is no doubt. Uh, as far as Nathan Lyon being lucky, look, Nathan, obviously, as we all know, uh, has over 200 test wickets. Um, he's our best off spinner that we've had ever. So it, it may not be that he's taking wickets at the moment, but there's no indication that he's bowling poorly. Um, I'm sure if he continues to bowl well, uh, as we say in cricket, the wheel always turns.
And just on um, the, the theory of taking your opportunity, Nick Maddinson didn't exactly um, set the world alight with 33 and 6 up against Victoria. Why, why go with him? Then? Yes, fair, fair, fair comment. And I think in uh, my comments previously, that would have been covered. We see him as a player of enormous potential. Uh, he is definitely a game breaker. And if we can get the best out of him at that level, which we think we can, uh, he could be a very, very important player for us down the track. Um, Trevor, did some of these selections, like Maddinson, come down to the instincts of the selectors more than anything else? Well, sometimes you, sometimes you do, of course. You, you go with your gut, as, as they say. It's all very well looking at statistics all the time. Um, but sometimes, particularly right now, we were asked to go with some players, and we decided to do that, of course, because we, we obviously need to uh, go with some players uh, that we thought could play for Australia and hold us in good stead for years to come. And that trio of batsmen, Renshaw, Maddinson and Hanscom, did they stand out amongst the other candidates substantially or, or was it a pretty close call? Probably there, there were others considered. There's no, no doubt about that. Um, form on the first two were, were very important, of, of course. There, there was always uh, an area at the top of the order that was in contention. Uh, and Peter Hanscom, of course, getting 200. Peter has been there, thereabouts, for a good couple of years now. Uh, he, he has always been spoken about in our selection meetings. Uh, hasn't quite made the cut previously, but now uh, his form can't be ignored. Can you discuss Chad Sayers? Was he perhaps unlucky to not be selected sooner? Well, not, not really. I, I, I don't think so. Chad's a, a very good performer and a very good performer in Adelaide, of course, and, and that's why uh, he has been chosen for this test match. Uh, he bowls very well here, as, as we all know. It was only two Sheffield Shield games ago, I think he, he took 11 or 12 wickets here. So uh, hopefully, if he plays, uh, he can continue to perform well. Is there a possibility that both he and Jackson Burke could play uh, Nathan Lyon as the 12th man, just given the pink ball at Adelaide Oval on the day-night sure. test? Yeah, I won't speculate that uh, on that at the moment. Uh, we'll take care of that in a couple of days' time, but uh, possibly unlikely, but you never say never. Rambo, uh, Trevor, you've called for people to be a bit patient with this group, um, but you were involved playing when there was a pretty uh, volatile era and then you picked teams for a long time. Is this as, kind of a, as close to a crisis as you've seen since the, the days of the... 80, mid 80s. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't think so. I, I'm not, not so sure it's a uh, bad crisis. As I suggested, you know, it wasn't long ago we were number one in the world, so uh, things haven't gone our, our way. There are no excuses. We haven't played well, um, but a lot of countries go through this. I, I don't have any doubts, and uh, we've got to try to get on the upward spiral now, if we possibly can. Uh, we put a lot of faith in these players. Now, of course, everything is, is there provided for them to, to improve their game and continue to hopefully perform well. Um, but we have to get better, there's no doubt about that. Other countries are, as, we, as we've seen uh, around the world, uh, most countries are getting better, so we have to as well. Dan, Trevor, um, what have your thoughts been over the last little while on Australian batsmanship generally, and I suppose the, the trends that we've seen, obviously it's, it's been very, you know, thrown in sharp relief the last couple of test matches, but just the way you've seen it, it been unfolding in terms of skills and I suppose ability to bat time as well. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's a fair question and a fair comment. Um, not that easy to answer, answer that one, to be, to be honest. Um, we go through periods like this, I'm sure, and, and as I suggested, other countries probably have, and then they come out of it. Uh, with the talent that's around in Australian Sheffield Shield teams now, and, and a lot of it is young too, let's, let's not forget that. Um, I think in due course we will get some good players coming through. I don't have any, any doubts about that. Uh, I, I do think they need encouragement. I do think they, they need uh, to continue uh, to, to uh, improve and leave no, no stone unturned to do so. Um, it's easy to sit here and, and say that, I, I know that, but that's what we'll be asking. And just in terms of, uh, I suppose, the, that, you know, that hunger for runs or that the character that you want to see in, in an Australian in an Australian side. How much was that a, a point of discussion the last few days? Yeah, we, we did uh, look look at that as well. There's no doubt about that. We we certainly uh, are looking at players' characters and, and 
uh, and their, their toughness, their ability, as you quite rightly suggested, to bat for periods of time, and that's essential now. You talk about Trevor about being patient and uh, people being patient with this new young squad. How much time do you give them? Like, do you have to basically go? This is this is them for the summer. What, what, are, you, what are you thinking in those terms? Yeah, it's not about how much how much time. What what we would like to see now is, is a better performance, and and if this group can give us a better performance, that will hold them in good stead going forward. Um, at the moment, th this team is for the uh, Adelaide Test. Then we go into one day, so a different format of the game, and then we come back together again and, and reselect for the Test matches versus Pakistan. But I I if we can have a better performance as a unit as well, that will hold them in good stead. Last four, Niz, Benny, Theo. Just on Neville, how unlucky is he? Because it was widely accepted that he was picked in the first place because of his glovesmanship as much as anything. Yeah, obviously uh, very unlucky, there's no doubt about that, but we consider uh, Matthew Wade's wicket-keeping has improved to the extent that, um, you know, we, we've gone in that direction and it's no secret that Matthew Wade's batting is, is, is very, very good. In fact, he's scored hundreds in Test cricket. Trevor, just to follow up on that question, I mean, obviously batting would have been a big part of Wade's selection, but was there an element of his personality as well that the selectors liked, he, the sort of mongrel and kind of attitude that he that he has yeah I think that that's fair fair comment he's obviously seen as uh, as a tough competitor and and that is what we're looking for in our players now and and we want them to get out there now and and have, have a fair crack at, at this and um, you know go forward with with that like I say we don't expect an immediate turnaround but uh, we've got a bit of faith in these guys now Trevor, the team's changed so much from the first couple of tests. Do you feel like the selection group got it that badly wrong in the first couple of tests? And, and who gave the directive to revamp the team? No, look, all we can do is give people the opportunity and it really is up to them to, to take it. And, um, you know, an opportunity is, a, is an opportunity to play for your country uh, and we do expect them to, to take it eventually after a period of time. And, as someone else asked before, what that period of time is is, is completely up to us and um, at our discretion. So the, the picking the best team at that time is out the window? Well, it's always considered that we do pick the best team. Last one. So just on that, does that mean that you've... It's a radical revamp, so have you got it... Did the assessments, were they wrong before and now they're right? Or is it just driven by the board saying, no, we need a revamp or is it you coming in as chairman and saying, no, we need to go this path and these players Right. Do. No, on the contrary, um, prior to Rod Marsh's departure, um, the panel then had these discussions about where we needed to go uh, with a view to the future. Because uh, as we've seen, we haven't won very much. We've lost a lot of test matches of late. So we considered it was time to start to revamp and look to the future.